Our episode begins with the doctor using his hollow imagery to get deep, penetrating scans of all the crew members, for what I can only hope are for medical purposes. Is it going to hurt? Of course not. A few photons never hurt anybody. Ah, you've already mastered the art of lying to children. You've come a long way, Doc. But what of Harry Kim, the uncategorical member of the crew? If you'd like to stay for a moment and see what you look like from the inside out, why not? Because seeing your own intestines is probably going to be gross? Handsome fellow. Wonder if I can get him to go out with me. The doctor looks it over and discovers evidence of neurosurgery done on Harry, presumably a failed attempt to insert a spine into him. And it's odd because Harry doesn't remember having it done, and the doctor knows it's his handiwork, but doesn't remember performing it. Ah, mystery. Perfect way to end a teaser. Well, last month we looked at Unimatrix Zero, and the question that came to mind was, would the cartoonish Janeway I often employ and the actual Janeway have done the same thing? Because it sure seemed like she was full of crazy that episode. So, I decided this week to put that to the test with my new segment, My Way or Janeway. I will dictate how Crazy Janeway parody will respond and compare it against the actual Janeway to see how the episode shakes out. I've finished giving the crew their annual physicals, but as usual, the captain was a no-show. Yeah, I can't imagine why. The only thing colder than your instruments is your bedside manner. Cytometabolism is normal. Endocrine functions functioning. That's a relief. Barely tolerant sarcasm. The judges give it a... And there's been a little more wear and tear on Seven of Nine's cranial infrastructure. Perhaps if you stopped hitting her on the head with that pool cue, it would help. When I want your opinion, I'll program it into you. He talks about the mysterious surgery, and Janeway has no memory of it either, and everyone is too busy to get on with it at the moment. But the doctor's got an ace up his sleeve. Queen of Head Trauma will help him out in an hour. But when she shows up, he has no memory of any mystery or of asking Seven anything about it. And when he looks up Harry's scan, it's missing. Well, the doctor figures he will go back through memory lane by checking out his personal collection of snapshots. He was quite a shutterbug back in that day, even though this is a hobby he seems to have picked up just this season. Anyway, he goes in there and finds out those have been deleted, too. Now, of course, in Star Trek, deleting only ever works when the plot demands it, so with just a few taps, Seven can get slightly degraded images showing some mysterious ensign. Restoring memories from that time will also fill in the blanks, more of the ensign and of an attack. The Doctor and Seven believe that some intruders is still on board, connected to this event, because of the recent tampering with his memory. Now that's actually just me. I mess with everyone else's head, why shouldn't I mess with yours? But of course, Janeway's not going to be so brazen about it. She just won't come out and admit it. She'll be more like, uh, go offline. Don't worry about this. Everything is just fine. Believe me. Just go offline and definitely nothing will happen to you. No. I want you to deactivate yourself for now. Yep, for the third time Janeway has done this. If at first you don't succeed at mind wipes, try, try again. No matter what state you leave their brains in. But the doctor was clever and figured out how to record the person responsible and to ensure that his memories would be restored afterwards. So he heads to the bridge where... Then I had their heads cut off and placed on a pike as a warning to the others. It was the 77th Emperor's Cup. Takashi forced Karpek out of the circle in less than three seconds. I had a fifth row seat. There you go. I was honestly starting to worry about you a little bit there, Captain. Okay, the doctor confronts her over this, and in her ready room, Janeway admits that the attack did happen, but it resulted in damage to his program, which made it necessary to remove his memories. I've wiped your head three times, and I'll wipe it again if I want to, so just suck it up, baldy. Captain! I've made a command decision for your own benefit and the welfare of this entire crew. I'm not willing to debate it. And we're back. Yep, the doctor's going to have to just accept it, and they won't tell him why, out of fear that whatever happened before might happen again now. Okay. So, you're running some kind of cell analysis? <laughs> yes. There is really nothing in your life to prepare you for having to have a conversation in this situation, is there? Wow, the captain's purging your memories, huh? Man, that's a bitch. Uh, say, is that one of those lamps with the dimmers? And Neelix said they were all broken. Seven finally decides to confront Janeway over this because it doesn't seem right to her that the captain would violate his rights as an individual. What rights? He's part of my ship. If I want him reprogrammed, let him be happy that I assigned it to Torres and not Naomi Wildman. 
Now, I've told that replicator a dozen times about the temperature of my coffee. It just doesn't seem to want to listen. Almost as if it's got a mind of its own. But it doesn't. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. The doctor is more like that replicator than he is like us. Wow, even I'm impressed, and I'm supposed to be the crazy one. Seven objects that the doctor is more than that, but Janeway doesn't agree with her, and she's just going to have to accept it. You say that I am a human being, and yet I am also Borg. Part of me not unlike your replicator. Will you one day choose to abandon me as well? Don't make me get my pool cue again, Seven. I'd like to think I made my decision eight ago for all the right reasons. The truth is, my own biases about what you are had just as much to do with it. At the very least, you deserve to know exactly what happened. And a good sign for Janeway, too. Recognizing that she was mistaken, at the very least in her attitudes, and to treat the doctor like a person. Our memories, the only record we have of our experiences, helps us, well, make us what we are as people. When someone takes them, alters them, they are arguably destroying us, leaving someone a little bit different to walk around in our bodies, unaware of what has happened to them. That's why the doctor sat there in his vigil, about to be changed, the person that he was to be replaced by someone a little bit different, someone judged less a danger without him being given a chance to defend himself. This move at least permits him to meet this with the respect that he deserves. Besides, it can't really be worse than not knowing. Surprise! Unless it's a surprise party. God, I hate surprise parties. Thank you, TV, for completely ruining them for me. Ensign Jatal is someone the Doctor barely knows, but it was on this shuttle mission with him and Harry when the aliens arrived and attacked them for no reason. Aliens are dicks. He causes serious injury to the humans, but the Doctor is only briefly disrupted and beams him back to his ship. You should have beamed him in this space. I'm not in the business of killing people, Ensign. But the weapon has left residual charges of bad mojo in their bodies, and they'll die unless the doctor can perform a very complex procedure that he's devised, too complex to talk Tom through and without enough time to perform it on both of them. So the doctor is forced to make a choice to save one life while letting the other one perish. Because I guess Kess is too busy elsewhere to help out. <laughs> too bad for you, Ensign Goldshirt. So the doctor chooses to save Harry, and she dies, and wow... If you can't even get chosen to be saved on your own birthday, your life was just one long series of getting screwed. So she gets to the traditional burial at space. And remember, you're not really dead as long as we remember you. Now purge all records of her existence. Later on, he's talking to Neelix about some supplies when he has a psychotic breakdown. Now, th this is not uncommon with people dealing with Neelix, but this time is due to a problem with handling what he did. The doctor's program is designed in a triage situation to calculate which patient in a crisis he should treat. But in this case, the calculations were exactly equal, so his actions were not based upon cold hard facts, the dictates of medicine, in all of their clinical fineness. It was based on his personal biases. He had a closer relationship to Harry, so he chose to save him, and thus by inaction, chose for Jatal to die. He's not in the business of killing people, but he did so all the same in his own mind. Why did she have to die? Why did I kill her? Why did I decide to kill her? Why? Somebody tell me why! This created a feedback loop between his ethical programming and his personality subroutine. In essence, he was never designed to handle this kind of situation, and so he couldn't. And in the end, that's what it comes down to. Nothing more than an inherent issue with the material that he's made of. On Monday, I spoke of my experience having to deal with the mentally ill on a regular basis, and one of the sad things about it is that in some cases, because I don't claim to be an expert, so I'm just speaking of my own understanding, it's down to the fact that we are, at our most basic, chemically based creatures, and just as it is unfair that the doctor is subject to the whims of code to be subject to a chemical malfunction. And what do you do then when a person suffers this chemical issue? Many find they can no longer be around the person, and it's understandable because it is unimaginably hard to cope with it at its worst. In Voyager's case, with the doctor, they chose to eliminate the issue altogether. They had the power. They figured they'll just rewrite him so that the problem would go away. 
but then they treated it as if that was the end of it. They didn't cure the problem, they just eliminated an inconvenient issue said problem caused. Because it's the easier thing to do, to pretend that now that the appearance of the issue can't be seen, that the problem has gone away. But the question that should arise automatically is, when you have tried the same thing three times, and it has failed, maybe it's time to see that the short-term answer is no answer at all. We gave him a soul, Balana. Do we have the right to take it away now? Janeway speaks to Seven about it, echoing the conversation that Seven had come to her over earlier in her inquiry. Janeway has a reputation for messing with people against their will and was hoping to get a little bit of feedback on it, you know, put up a little box there. Have I messed with your head? Leave some feedback. Seven admits that while she had no choice in being remade into a human, she wouldn't change it if she could. So rather than reprogramming the doctor, Janeway allows him to try to cope with the problem without reprogramming him. And as I said on Monday also, mental illness is not something where one thing will just snap you out of it and you're all better, that you could reason it away. But the doctor's nature is different. As a creature composed of code, logic is at his foundation. So in essence, he can work his way through a problem because he's made of a different kind of stuff than we are. He may indeed be more like a replicator than us. And that's the issue where often in message episodes it falls flat. We shouldn't need to have common elements to be able to coexist and have mutual respect. We should be completely different and at least recognize the fact that we both have value. So Janeway decides to leave him running to work through this problem, with someone on hand to help him out if he needs it. To make him feel as comfortable as possible... They put him on the holodeck with nothing but a chair, like this is some kind of David Lynch approach where you expect a midget to come dancing onto the set. We come in during Janeway's watch. The more I think about it, the more I realize there's nothing I could have done differently. What do you mean? Wow, she sounds irritated. You mind? Some of us are trying to read over here. Oh, Kafka, you are hilarious. The doctor begins rambling on the nature of inevitability, that this is the end result of an unavoidable course of events ever since the universe kicked off. So I guess he's now a Calvinist. Progress. Yeah, this salesman just turned into a giant cockroach. I was referring to the doctor. No, turning him into a cockroach wouldn't solve anything. It'd probably just make him mad. The ending was a bit of a disappointment to Joe Minoski, who had struggled to get it just right, when we'd have Brandon Braga shit all over it. Pretty much everyone else agreed that it should have been left alone, and there was uh, enough feeling that it was different that they did make quite a stink over it, but there just wasn't enough time left to fill both versions, so they went with Braga's version. The doctor starts to make a realization and begins to share his dark, sad thoughts with Janeway, only to discover that she's fallen asleep because of her exhaustion, so he reads from her book. Braga removed some of the dialogue and completely changed things around so that the artistry of the scene was lost. For one thing, upon discovering the sleeping Janeway, the doctor wakes her up, annoyed with her. Doesn't have quite the same punch as reflecting on a friend who has kept vigil to the point of exhaustion and then snapping at them for being tired. Then he tells her to leave and reads from the book. It still works, but it's much less effective than it would have been if it just would have been left alone. Post-episode follow-up, stupid Neelix moment was setting up a surprise party. God, I hate surprise parties. Final score for Latent Image is 7 out of 10, a good mystery with an interesting payoff that leads into a serious bit of examination of the nature of synthetic life. Oh, and the reason I stopped the scoring with Janeway thing partway through? Well, crazy Janeway's solution to the problem was just delete the operating room scene, tell the doctor you're slightly damaged, and that Chattel was already dead when he was beamed over. Actual Janeway's solution was to hunt down his memories of her and eliminate all of them. I figured the game was over when the real captain's plan was more extreme than her own parodies was. But as I said, I did appreciate Janeway's ability to recognize her own biases and missteps. Some of Picard's strongest character moments in his show were those recognitions, such as when Data observed in The Measure of a Man that his not being human lent justification to the experiment in Picard's mind and Picard's terse dismissal was an indication that he didn't like that answer but didn't have anything to make it less true. Seeing Janeway do similar things helps a great deal. Overcompensating because you're afraid any weakness will undermine the authority of a female captain sells the audience short and does her and Mulgrew a disservice. Her appearance in Seven's cargo bay showed that she was someone like Atlas who was trying to hold up the world but was 
allowing a small part of her burden to be visible despite herself. One strange thing that came from this, though, for me was, if it's so easy to erase the doctor's memories, why did they always threaten to just delete the entire doctor instead of his memories in certain circumstances, like when the Borg were going to assimilate him? I want you to delete yourself at the first sign of the Borg. But, Captain, I could just delete the last 24 hours of my memories. No, no, the Borg might recover that deleted data. Well, then, couldn't they do that if you deleted my program? New Order, I want you to delete yourself at the first sign you're annoying me. I'm afraid.